This is Trail Bike of the Year Test had 20 bikes, all priced between £2,800 and £3,650. They also all had between 120 and 150mm of rear wheel travel. One of those bikes was the Vitus Escarp 29 VRX, and it came in our top five for two very good reasons. First off, the Escarp represents incredible value for money. This has to be one of the best value trail bikes on the market at present. The other reason is that the Escarp has arguably the best suspension in the entire test for those rough, rocky trails. Vitus only offer the Escarp in three sizes, a small, a medium and a large. The large we had has a reach of 470 millimeters and that's paired with 435 mil chainstays. There's a 66 degree head angle and a 74.5 degree seat angle. Vetus sell through chain reaction cycles and this contributes to their really good value for money as it is effectively a direct sale brand. Europeans could also buy the bike through chain reaction cycles. US purchasers could get one through Chain Reaction, although obviously there'll be a fair amount of shipping and potentially import duties to pay as well. Vitus use aluminium for their frame, and this contributes to the 14.8 kilo weight, so it's not a particularly lightweight bike. However, they are using a fully floating suspension system. Usually shocks are connected to the front triangle and then are actuated by a rocker linkage, for example. However, on the Vitus, the bottom of the shock is connected to an extension of the chain stays, and then the top is again connected to that rocker linkage. And this means that the shock is actuated at both ends. The benefit of a full floating design is that you get incredible small bump sensitivity and you get what people call like a magic carpet ride, a bottomless feel from the rear suspension. There's such beautiful progression throughout the entire stroke, it rarely feels like you're getting towards the end of the travel even if you are. It has 140mm of travel, but you could be forgiven for thinking it has like 160. The feel of the back end is sublime. What this means is on big, fast, chunky descents, like those we found in Finale Ligura where we did our final testing and filming, is that the bike is incredibly composed. At no point did any of our flat pedal testers feel that their feet were about to get blown off the pedals. And you could really open the throttle and let the bike just go. This made it arguably the best descend on test, but that isn't without its downsides. Problem one, the bike sits quite deep into its travel and the majority of its progression comes later on in the stroke. This means that on flatter trails, which are quite peddly, it is quite a wallowy feeling bike. It isn't the most sprightly, it's not the most engaging. So if a lot of your riding is around trail centers or on more mellow terrain, you might not get on quite so well with the Escarp. You could obviously boost the pressures in the rear shock to keep it more propped up, but I think you would lose some of the benefits of that rear suspension system by doing that. It's also not great up a hill, and of all the bikes in Trail Bike of the Year, this is the one that I use the lockout switch on the DPX2 rear shock the most. However, if your riding is mostly focused at spinning up a fire road and then hitting some real steep technical terrain with lots of roots, rocks, drops, that sort of thing, I think you will really like the Escarp as that back end is so, so good. So the other reason why the Escarp did so well in this year's test is that it represents incredible value for money. It's £3,000 here in the UK, and okay, you get an aluminium frame, but what you do get is some top-end kit plugged into it. At the front, there's a 150mm Fox 36 factory fork with the all-singing, all-dancing Grip 2 damper, and this fork is sublime. At the back, there's a matching Fox Float DPX2 shock. This has the piggyback. This means there's more oil volume in the shock, which means more consistent performance down longer trails, as it's more resistant to heat buildup. Vitas have been real smart with their brakes, though. They've used the SRAM Guide R e-brake. Now, this was originally designed for e-bikes, and it uses a guide lever with the older code-style caliper. This means you get kind of an in-between weight, you get a kind of more traily feel through the lever, but you get the bite of that bigger caliper. There's loads of power on offer, as well as plenty of modulation. It's not quite as bitey as a Shimano brake, and it's not quite as well modulated as a regular guide, but I think it's a really good mix. Wheels come in the form of a pair of DT Swiss M1700 spline wheels. These have a 30mm internal rim width and they are mated to a pair of Maxxis tyres. Up front there's a Minion DHF 
2.6 inch wide trail. And this comes with a Max Terra compound, so it's pretty sticky, nice and wide, and a great tread. On the back, you also get a Maxxis Minion in 2.6 inch. So to sum up, the Vitus Escarp probably won't suit a lot of trail riders. I do think that back end is a little bit too wallowy for riders who want to do big days in the hills, lots of pedaling, and ride more mellow terrain. However, if you get your kicks from riding steep, rocky, chunky terrain, big, steep, natural trails, I think you'll really like the Escarp. The back end is so good, it will deal with pretty much anything you dare throw at it. If you are that kind of rider, I really don't think you can do much better than the Vitus Escarp. Keep a look out for more Trail Bike of the Year reviews on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and let me know what you think of the Vitus in the comments below.